Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we are going to continue our studies by reviewing for the grade eight final exam. This is our show 2015 through 16 version, part one. If you need help with your homework, there's Dial a Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision Channel 15. Watch our study videos on YouTube. My channel name is Dan Robinson. You can watch our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 16. Very good movie. You can also tweet me at DRobMath1. So let us know how we're doing. All right, here's our first question. Which number is irrational? Irrational means not capable of being turned into a fraction. So let's get started by looking at our choices. We have the first choice is a fraction, so we don't want to be a fraction, so because ear means not. Rational means fraction. So not fraction. So this is a fraction, so that choice is gone. Here's an interesting number, 5.03208 and dot, dot, dot. Well, irrational numbers are also numbers that do not terminate, they do not repeat, and they go on and on forever. These dots here mean that they go on and on forever. And there is no pattern, I noticed, 0, 3, 2, 0, 8. So there is no distinct pattern going on. So I would vote for choice B. But let's take a look at choice C. I remember a video I made not too long ago where you have numbers with uh, some of them have a little line on top. That means this number is repeating. So if you remember in that video, we started by letting N equal to that number. And then we saw how many numbers are repeating, which was just the one little three, and we would make that a power of 10, so 10 to the first power. We would multiply this number, we said let n be this number, by 10. So we would multiply by 10, we really just move the decimal point over by one sp space. And we'd have 5, 2.3 repeating. Now, what we're supposed to do, if you remember correctly, we're supposed to subtract our numbers. So we we'll let's first take a, tackle the left side. So let's take a look at the left side here. We've got 10n. I'll write this down here equals 52.3 repeating and we got one little n which equals the original number that we had established this to be and we're going to subtract well 10n minus 1n, 1n is 9n and when we subtract this well let me just put an extra 3 here because this is going to be repeating over and over. So let's take a look at what happens with the threes. The threes here cancel out and this repeating three minus two will give me a one and then bar one from here make that a four and I'll have twelve minus five that'll give me seven and bring down the four so I have forty seven point one then I divide by nine because I want to solve for n. My n's will cancel out. So let's cancel out the n. And now I have 47.1 divided by 9 and that's a fraction. Even though it has a decimal there, I can move this decimal over one space making that 471 and if I moved it on the top I have to do the same thing to the bottom so let me put a zero there and move that over and I'll make that 90. So that would be my answer, 47, 471 over 90. And that's a fraction. 
Now, Dr. Rob, how do you know that that is right? Well, let me get my calculator and I'll type that in. So, 471 over, and I can use the division sign, over 90, divided by 90. I should get back to 5.23 repeat, 2, 5.2 repeating 3. So let's see if we get that. So press enter. And there we have it. 5.2 repeating 33333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And that's what this one is. So this fraction, 471 over 90, is a a fraction and that is a rational number so this is a rational number so check out that video on how I changed uh, repeating decimals to fractions so that's a good video also so let's look at the last one here we have the square root of 169 and that's 13 because 13 times 13 is 169 so all of our choices have been eliminated except choice B because that one is a non-repeating decimal in which you cannot and it's non-terminating and you cannot figure out a pattern here so it has no pattern and it goes on and on forever so that makes it irrational we cannot turn that into a fraction so our choice answer has got to be B let's press this and there we go B good question all right what is the value of X in the equation X cubed equal 1 over 27 well let's write that down X cubed equals 1 over 27. So we're looking for the value of x. Well, the, the ob, ob, opposite of cubing would be cube rooting. So I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. It's like a square root, but the index number is 3 on the outside. So what that does, it cancels out the exponent here and leaves me with x. Now I have the cube root of 127. Well, this is where my calculator comes in handy. So let me get my calculator back into the play. So let's clear that. And here's my cube root. So the first thing you type is the 3, because that's the index number. Press second. And the exponent arrow gives you that funny looking square root sign, but you have a x value. And that means you can use any root that you want. And then let's put inside parenthesis our 127. And I can use the division sign because that also means the fraction bar. Close that. And now press enter. There's my answer 0.33333. So it's a repeating decimal. And we have a button that we can change a decimal to a fraction. So by pressing second, find that F double arrow D button that's fraction to decimal and then press enter you get one-third so the answer we were looking for was one-third and so one-third to the third power is 27 so if you multiply one times one times one that'll give you the one and three times three times three That'll give you 27 because 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So that's a good problem. Check your understanding. If you're doing good so far and you understand it, great. But if you have questions, we watch the video and write down your questions and bring them in. And we'll solve them tomorrow. Solve the equation 2x plus 3y equals 6 for y. All right. Let's write that down. So we have 2x plus 3y equals 6. Now to get rid of anything on the side over here that is with the y, because we want to get y by itself. So I'll do a little transposition here. And what it does is it cancels out <clears throat> excuse me, anything on this side that's not y. So I had a 2x here and 
I had a minus 2x here, and that should not be there, so I'll just color that out. So I had 2x minus 2x canceled out, leaving me with a positive 3y, and I have 6 minus 2x. Now, all I have to do is divide that by 3. So let's divide both sides by 3. So divide by 3, divide by 3 here, and I got to divide this by 3. What happens is it'll, it'll cancel out and my 3's on this side. Y will be equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2. Minus 2 divided by 3 is minus 2. And I'll put an X here so I can have it like this. Or if I want to write it in a different method, I could put Y equal to negative 2 thirds X plus 2 because that's a positive 2. So that'd be another way I could write it. That way it looks like I have my slope intercept form of the equation. But you never know when that comes in handy. So they just wanted us to solve it for y, so that's what we did. So we solved for y. So y equal negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Nice question. Write an equation of a line that has that intersects the y intercept, the, the y axis, sorry, y axis 6 and has a slope of negative 4. All right, so I want to write an equation of a line. So let's get our pen out here and write a y. Get y equal mx plus minus b. Now, all we have to do is know what the letters indicate. So they have a couple things important here. Slope is negative 4. So you should know that the x and the y are coordinates. So that's what the x and y mean. A slope is the letter m. m is a slope. So wherever you see the letter m, you're going to replace it with negative 4. And now, intersecting the y-axis at 6. So what that means, that's called your y-intercept, because it intercepts or intersects. Intercept. Sorry for my spelling. Intercept, y-intercept. At, which is going to be your plus or minus b. So that's your plus or minus b. Why is it plus or minus? Because sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. In this case, it is positive. So I'll put positive 6. Now all I have to do is rewrite those other letters back. So let me put it back. The y equal the x, and there's my plus 6. So my answer is going to be y equal negative 4x plus 6. And that is my equation of a line. So I hope you got that one. So I hope everything's going good for you. If you understand it so far, great. But if you're not sure, rewatch the video and write down your questions. So let's see. Let's continue. Let's see what else we got. Oh, we're finished. So if you need help with your homework, there's dial a teacher hotline, homework help hotline at 212-777-3380, Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. to 4 p.m. Don't forget to watch Math Time on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision, Channel 15. Please watch my videos. Let me know what you think. And help me to get better by giving me your suggestions on how I can improve my videos. So my channel name is Dan Robinson. Check out our latest video, PKMS Math Prep 16. 
tweet me at drobmath1. Here's where we'll pick up next time. What is the solution set for the system of equations? 2x minus 5y equal 11, negative 2x plus 3y equal negative 9. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you got something out of it. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.